Retro Gaming on the Go, today, in Mikey's Lab. Hi, and welcome back to the lab. Our challenge today is to turn this random collection of parts into an awesome portable gaming solution using a Raspberry Pi and Recall Box. So lab code up. We're going to learn something today. Alright, so let's dive in and see what we have in this random collection of parts. I've got some DuPont cable, uh, dual female ends to plug into the Raspberry Pi GPIO. We've got a bunch of arcade control hookup wires that we're going to uh, just kind of scavenge and throw together. We've got a bunch of arcade style buttons. Not hap controls, I wish they were hap controls, but uh, if you can, it's not the same click that we remember from our childhood, but it's definitely a clicky button. A Raspberry Pi 3, which I've already inserted into this and it doesn't seem to want to come back out, so I didn't take it out. And for this one, we are using a 64 gig SD card, you can see the writing on it. which will go through the process of getting perfectly set up a little bit later. Uh, I also have an LCD screen with me for when we power this up. Alright, so I know what you're thinking. We've already done a project involving retro gaming. We made that awesome table almost a year ago. Uh, I agree. I came across this project which has a, a, a slightly more portable nature to it and I want to progressively work towards more smaller and more miniaturized uh, gaming solutions for uh, for this. Hopefully getting to eventually uh, the Minty Pie level, which we'll take a look at. I saw this uh, similar project online where I found the STL files for this uh, this enclosure. But we got had uh, one of these inside of here. Okay, now what this is, is this is a USB uh, interface for the controls. The only issue I had with the project was that he had a USB cable running from inside out and plugged into the Raspberry Pi, which even he said was a little bit hokey. So there has to be a better way to do this, and there is. So we are going to use the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi to interface the buttons and the joystick so that we can have an all internal one solution, because as you know, we do not replicate other people's work. We always make it our own, and we always expand upon it. So that's what we're doing today. The other thing that I wanted to research that wasn't part of his original project, because originally I don't believe his, button, his buttons were illuminated, I wanted to figure out a way to make it so that the buttons will light up when they're pressed. Not all the time. Now if we take a look at the buttons on the back here, you can see that there are two pins here, that's for the LED, and there are two pins here, that's for the micro switch. So we're going to explore something and see if we can get these to light up only when the button's pressed. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these buttons. And we are going to go ahead, I'm just going to put the ring on it for some reason, I don't know why. We're going to go ahead and conduct an experiment. And see if I can get this light uh, to light up whenever the button is pressed. Okay, so for the meantime, I'm just going to get rid of this and these other parts here. We're just going to focus on this button. Alright. I don't need an HDMI cable either. So. I need to figure out what the polarity on these are. So. We're going to work with the button, uh, the LED leads being at the top here. I'm just going to clamp onto them with uh, my alligator clips. And we'll grab my power supply. We'll turn it on show you what we're working with here. So we're currently set to 5.2 volts. I certainly do not want to hit this LED with that. So we're going to bring this down to 2.2 volts for now. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it illuminates at 5 volts. So, 
We know that we need five volts to come to this, okay? And we know that ground is on this side. So what I want to do, I want to get my multimeter involved here. Voltage DC. Alright, we're going to need some more test leads for this. So, what I want... black test lead here and we're going to connect this side of the button to ground to actual ground sorry okay, and we're going to connect this side of the LED to here Take my leads. I want to connect my one lead into ground, which I grab from the power supply. Right now we are seeing 2.5 volts with no light. Push it down, it lights up. And we go down low enough that I believe that will read as ground. So that is how we do that. All right, my theory was right. All right, so now we gotta look, we gotta work at producing the buttons themselves. All right, so. Okay, so if we know that this one is positive, this one is ground. The first thing I wanna do is join these two pins. Have them be mechanically close to each other. Turn the soldering station on. I don't know a little closer. Got some crappy 4K camera everywhere. What we're gonna do, we're gonna tin the crap into both of these together. I want to be very quick with this because these are plastic buttons. As such, I'm pretty sure they will not tolerate the 870 degrees that my soldering iron is pretty any very well. So, definitely gonna need to be quick. Okay. We'll strip it back. I'm actually gonna trim that. I don't want a whole lot of extra kicking around. And hold that down. Like so. Go ahead and pin this. Like so. Just gonna attach it like so. So as you can see, the lead is attached to the, the combined pins across here. Ground will attach here and plus five will attach there. Those will be common and spread around the entire inside, so we'll wire those once everything's in place. So we want to try to keep these uh, spade connectors around. Because I'm definitely going to reuse them if I can. I like to build things you can take apart. As you can see, we stripped away the end of the wire there. Pin that. Grab the button. And to solder it to the fused contacts. And that's all there is for that one. Now we're just going to repeat this a whole bunch of times. I'm not going to make you watch it, so... I'm going to go ahead now and uh, <clears throat> apologize for any slight differences in the video. The first half of this was shot, and I got 
really sick for several days, and I'm back now finishing the project, so I'm probably wearing a different shirt. I probably still sound a little gravelly compared to what I did <clears throat> before, so I apologize for the hiatus in videos, but uh, yeah, I, was, I was pretty sick. Now that we have all the signal wires connected to the buttons, we can start to insert the, bu insert the buttons into the top of the 3D printed enclosure. So to do that with these, it's very simple. They have a collar that unscrews. Like so. We feed the wire down through the hole. Push the button in place. It over. Repeat the color, the wire, and over to up to the button here, and just screw it down. And we do that a whole bunch more times. Now, one of the things that you want, uh, I want to do anyway, is line these up. So when I create a harness, they're going here, 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 in the same pattern across all of the buttons. You don't have to. Just make my, I think it makes your life a little easier. Same principle with blue guys. The more buttons you get in here, the harder it can be to get those collars done up. They don't have to be super tight. But we want them not to spin. Alright. There we go. That's all those. The joystick is just held in with four screws. Um, I just used uh, M3.5 with nuts on the bottom. And slide the collar over top of the shaft of the joystick. And we'll screw the ball in place. And then we'll start hooking up the wires for the joystick. Alrighty then. So this is obviously the orientation of the, uh, of the control pin. One of the traps for new players when working with uh, with retro gaming arcade stuff is if you push up on the joystick, it activates the bottom switch. So they're inverted. Left is right, right is left, up is down, and down is up. So we have to keep that in mind when we wire this up. The joystick came with another set of uh, cables to hook them up. We are definitely going to use those cables. We are going to make a change though. Uh, I'm only going to use the sing single uh, signal wires, and we're going to do a common ground across all of the, the uh, all of the four push buttons in the joystick. So I'm going to grab my snips here. I'm going to cut the blue one off of each one. We're obviously going to terminate the ends with the Dupont connectors, just like the. Uh, previous ones. I've seen some people solder the the buttons directly to the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. I like to build stuff that can be taken apart and worked on and that just seems a little too uh, permanent for me. The very first thing I want to do is essentially create a wiring harness for the ground. And now the way we're going to do that is to take these ground right here. And I'm going to connect them in. I'm going to trim them. I'm going to solder them together to be one long ground and then I'm going to come off with a DuPont connector right to the single ground for the GPIO. First thing I'm going to do is chop that off. Handy dandy wire strippers. Twist it. Turn it. Let me see 
receiving side. There we go. Now we just do this a bunch more times. reason that we're using the spade connectors, uh, as I've mentioned many times in my videos, I like to build things that can be taken apart. You could, if you wanted to, solder directly to this, uh, to the switches themselves, but that would mean that you can never take the switches out without desoldering, which to me seems like a pain in the butt. Alright, so that is all the grounds of the button summed up. We need to do the grounds of the joystick still. Once we're done that, if you weren't using lighted buttons, this would be the end for you. Uh, for me, I'm going to create a 5 volt loop as well, just to power the button, uh, power the lights. Now, what we've done is we're going to use blue for signal, but we have all these white ones too. So we're going to do the same loop idea that we did with the the buttons for the the joystick, because there's actually four buttons in the joystick. I'm making the arbitrary decision of we're using the 90 degree ones for our grounds and the straight ones for our signals. So we're just going to plop these in place. I'm going to get some of these wires out of my way. Sorry about bopping you guys in the face there. Now, if the micro switches on your joystick have three pins, one is going to be the common, one is going to be normally closed, and one is going to be normally open. Uh, we want this to be normal. We want to hook up to normally closed. No, normally open. <laughs> so if your micro switches have three pins, we're going to want to hook the ground up to the common and the signal up to a normally open pin. Open meaning that it's not. It's an open circuit. It can't. Data, or, uh, power can't flow through. So here we are. It's day three of this project. Uh, the first interruption was caused by me catching the plug and fighting it off. Second interruption was dental surgery on Thursday. Yay. Um, stand by for a video on the importance of dental health and how that can play into just about every aspect of your life. But uh, here we are. And uh, as you can see, if I pull this up over here, I have finished the, the positive loop and the ground loop around the, the buttons that were there. And I'm now set up for a test, okay? So what I've done is I have plus five and ground right here. And these are coming off the Raspberry Pi, okay? To feed the buttons here. And then have my multimeter set up, which I will turn to volts DC. Okay, which should read zero at this point. Okay, close enough. And as you can see, the sensing lead is connected to this beigey alligator clip, which is reading the output of this button, and the negative lead is connected to the ground loop. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn my power supply on, which will turn the Raspberry Pi on. As you can see, the light starts to light up. We're going to have to reflash this card, because I've booted this so many times and then just ripped it out from underneath it. But if we take the control panel now, and we flip it over, 
If you press the button, you can see it lights up. And when it's not lit and not pressed, if we look at the multimeter, you can see that it's reading 2.4 volts, which on a 3.3 volt system will definitely read as a positive. And when I hit the button, that plummets to 0.002 uh, volts, which should definitely read as a, as a low. So this should work. So the next step, and the other, oh, the other thing that I did too, is I added uh, the DuPont cables for the joystick in the same way that I've added them for the other ones. So I'm going to tear down this experiment and we're going to start to put the inputs into the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to finish off the ground and positive inside the case. Now I'm not going to make you watch me do that because that will just take too long. Okay, so the very next thing that I want to do is I want to do the ground and the positive inside the case. Which means I'm going to need my soldering iron back for the last time for this project. Back over here, make sure that I'm not stuck on anything. And let's turn the soldering iron on. Alright, so for these, unlike the, the main ones that I did here where you can see I extended the DuPont cable, I did that because I wanted to be able to hold the, the top part of this open and be able to work on the inside of it. Uh, these I won't be doing that because they don't move. So what I have here is a DuPont cable that I cut down. So let me go ahead and part of the insulation back. You can see there's a much finer cable inside to uh, to work with. It's also the first video I've done with multiple cameras, so it's interesting having the option of angles. Alright, so this is going to be positive, which means I want it to come over here and connect to the LED lead. Ground DuPont cable that I got. Strip some of this back. Turn it around like so. Then because there's a, a limited number of uh, plus five pins available on the on the Raspberry Pi, but no shortage of ground, we're going to use a separate cable for ground for this one, but we're going to daisy chain and use one of the spade connectors for the positive five, because there's very, as I said, there's a limited number of positive fives available. So we put the spade connector onto the button, like so. I'm going to put it on the screen somewhere here. But we have the wiring diagram for Recall Box's internal GPIO setup. Again, if you're going to use RetroPi, or if you want to dig a little deeper into the Recall Box's config, you can set this up to use any pins you want. Um, I'm just going to use the default, because there's enough of them there for what I want to do, and we'll get this up and running. The next thing I'm going to connect is the joystick. Again, remember that every control on the joystick is inverted. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the joystick wired up. Now I've got some buttons. So as you can see, if we wanted to add more buttons, there's still lots of room in the GPIO. Alright, so that completes the physical build of our little console here. I was going to do this in one video, but we've really run up again for the time clock on this one, so there will be a part two. It's already been shot, it'll be coming out in about a week from when this video is released. But I wanted to turn this on, I wanted to show you that it works, and I wanted to show you what the actual current draw is. Because a lot of people have told me that you need to feed a Raspberry Pi 2.5 amps for anything. Um, I don't think that's true, so we're going to find out. I have this hooked up to my lab bench power supply, which is right there. I'm going to turn it on through that. You're going to watch me play a video game over here, probably Super Mario Bros. 3, which I own the cartridge for. That's very important with ROMs. You have to own the physical game before you can use the ROM. Legally. So I'm going to turn power supply on. Watch this boot up over here. Then we chose the Nintendo 64 intro. I apologize for no audio, but I really don't want a copyright strike. Now I'm going to go up to the original Nintendo. Mario Bros. 3, which is the last game on the list. Just want to take a second and show you the power supply. Get a little bit out of the way. Hopefully it's in focus. There's absolutely no way for me to tell. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the game. shut off. The game is running. Looks like we're taking about 500 milliamps of current while the game is running. So let's hit start. Hit one player. Right, I'm going to try to put this down in a way that you'll be able to see it still. Again, I have no way of knowing if you can. I'm hoping you can. Being slightly off to the side makes this so much harder. Now to go back, another capture new players, press hold start select, and we'll go back to the menu. So I'm going to shut this project down. Thank you for joining me in the lab. I hope you learned something today, and I'll see you next time.